Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to talk to you today for Aurora 23 about the sounds of space. And before I start, I'd like to introduce uh, my collaborators on this project, who are Diana Scarborough, a multimedia artist based in Cambridge, UK, and Kim Cuneo, a leading Australian composer and head of music at the Australian National University. I'll give you an outline of my talk to start. I'll begin with an introduction and explain the um, sounds of space. And then I'll move on and play some sample sounds recorded by the Halley VLF receiver in the Antarctic before moving out into near-Earth space to listen to some very similar sounds from the Van Allen probes. I will then conclude with a discussion of our art-science collaboration. Our planet naturally produces a wide variety of radio emissions. And these radio waves are generated by two principal processes. By lightning activity on Earth and by geomagnetic storms, which are ultimately driven by the sun. These radio signals can be best detected by large antennae, either in space or on the ground. Now the radio spectrum covers a broad range of frequencies below 300 gigahertz and is used for a wide variety of applications from radio astronomy and satellite communications, mobile phones, GPS, Wi-Fi, AM and FM radio and down at the lowest frequencies for communication with submarines. But Earth's natural radio is actually below this lowest frequency in the frequency range between 100 hertz and 10 kilohertz. Now it turns out that the human ear responds to a very similar range of frequencies, typically ranging from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Earth's naturally occurring radio signals thus primarily lie within the audio frequency range. Now sound waves, of course, are typically vibrations of air molecules, but these emissions are a form of electromagnetic radiation and they cannot be heard directly. However, the recorded emissions can be converted to audio files and played back as sound. And this is what enables us to hear Earth's natural radio emissions, which we refer to as the sounds of space. Now the Spectrum Analyzer is a software tool that I will use a lot during this talk and it enables us to visualize the audio signals by plotting the amplitude of the sound on a frequency versus time graph. You can produce similar spectrograms yourself of your own voice and favorite tunes etc with the appropriate audio software. I'm going to start by talking about ground sounds, and by these I mean sounds that are detected or can be detected uh, on the surface of our planet. Now Halley Research Station is an absolutely fantastic location to record the sounds of space, as it is magnetically connected to the outer radiation belt, where some of the radio waves are generated. It's also electromagnetically quiet, being far from human society. The Halley VLF receiver itself consists of two orthogonal 58 meter squared single loop antennae. And it has been designed specifically to detect the magnetic fluctuations of the Earth's very low frequency radio waves. The weak signals are subsequently amplified, processed electronically and digitized at 96 kilohertz. Now the VLF ELF data from Halley are primarily used for the investigation of the science of space weather storms, to help us understand any potential links between space weather and the Earth's climate system, and also for lightning detection as part of a worldwide lightning detection network. And as a remarkable spin-off, the data can be converted directly to sound, revealing the mesmerizing and data-rich sounds of space. The main signals a ground-based VLF receiver will detect come from lightning activity. Each lightning flash emits a short radio pulse known as a spheric, and this covers a wide range of frequencies. 
And these are heard as short cracks and appear as vertical lines in a spectrogram. The spherics we detect at the Halley Research Station typically come from the Amazon and Congo basins, both of which are over 8,000 kilometers away. So let's take a listen to some spherics from the Halley Research Station. Spherics can travel even further, up to halfway round the globe. When they do this, the signals become slightly distorted, and the received signals are known as tweaks and have a pronounced ringing nature. Some of the radio waves associated with lightning leave the atmosphere behind and leak into near-Earth space. Here the signals may be guided by the Earth's magnetic field and received in the opposite hemisphere. They can even be reflected from the opposite hemisphere and detected in the same hemisphere as the original lightning strike. The higher frequency waves typically travel faster than the lower frequency waves. And these waves have a characteristic descending tone and are known as whistlers. Another prominent signal type, known as chorus, is generated deep within the magnetosphere itself. Energetic electrons enter the magnetosphere during geomagnetic storms driven by the sun causing the Earth's beautiful aurora and also at the same time generating chorus emissions. Now these waves tend to be strongest on the dawn side of the planet from 4 to 9 Earth radii as can be shown in this statistical survey using data from seven satellites. Now chorus is an important magnetospheric emission as it can accelerate electrons to very high energies in the Earth's outer radiation belt. These so-called killer electrons can damage satellites and pose a risk to humans in space. The most common form of chorus consists of a multitude of rising tones in the frequency range from 1 to 5 kilohertz. And these emissions are known as chorus because they resemble the twittering of birds in the dawn chorus. Sometimes the signatures, are more, so the signatures are more widely spaced and can exhibit unusual complexity. This example shows some strong, rapidly rising tones. Plasmospheric hiss is another important magnetospheric emission. Unlike chorus, plasmospheric hiss is a broadband structureless signal that resembles audio hiss. Plasmospheric hiss is also enhanced during geomagnetic storms. And these waves tend to be strongest on the day side of the planet at distances of 2 to 4 Earth radii from the centre of the planet. Plasmospheric hiss is largely responsible for the slot region between the inner and outer radiation belt. Different types of signals often appear together in the VLF recordings. This one minute interval contains a medley of sounds comprising spherics, diffuse whistlers, rising chorus elements in the frequency range 2 to 3 kilohertz, and steady plasmospheric hiss below about 2 kilohertz. Listen out carefully and see if you can pick out the different emissions in this one minute recording.
We're now going to leave the surface of the planet behind and move out into space and listen to some sounds in near Earth space. Now whistlers can also be detected by satellites in space. This spectrogram shows a brief series of whistlers below 6 kHz. And these whistlers were detected by the emphasis instrument on the Van Allen Probe A satellite back in 2015. Sometimes the conditions in space lead to the generation of so-called nose whistlers. These whistlers travel fastest at a particular frequency known as the nose frequency. The whistlers recorded here were detected by the emphasis instrument on the Van Allen Probe B satellite back in 2016. Chorus can also be detected in situ in space, and this spectrogram shows some chorus emissions as a population of short, very intense rising tones between 0.5 and 1 kHz. These emissions were recorded by the Emphasis instrument on the Van Allen Probe B satellite back in 2012. <laughs> Chorus can also extend to higher frequencies, and this spectrogram shows some rising tone chorus elements in the frequency range between 1 and 2.5 kHz. These emissions were recorded by the Emphasis instrument on the Van Allen Pro B satellite back in 2013. As on the ground, chorus in space can exhibit unusual complexity. In this example, the pattern of rising and falling tones gives rise to S-shaped features in the spectrogram. These emissions were recorded by the Emphasis instrument on the Van Allen Probe B satellite in 2014. In 2017, we set up a multidisciplinary art science collaboration to exploit these amazing natural sounds and to make them more accessible to wider audiences. Since then, we have used these amazing space sounds in talks to general audiences, 
in performances including animations, soundscapes and contemporary dance, short films and music. In a separate venture, the sounds of space from Halley were incorporated into an update of the space simulation video game Elite Dangerous in 2018. In this collaboration, I work with Frontier Developments, the creators of Elite Dangerous, to incorporate the eerie sounds into the new gameplay. In any one of over 400 billion stellar systems, players can now use a new analysis mode to discover more about their surroundings. The new mode, called the Full Spectrum System Scanner, features the simulated sounds of radio emissions from exoplanets in remote stellar systems based on the Halley VLF recordings. In 2018, we started work on an album combining sounds from the VLF receiver at Halley with original music. For this project, we chose a particularly active 24-hour period to set to music. Kim Cuneo then went to work and matched a day of audio with piano music that he conceived of and played within another 24-hour period. The resulting album, Aurora Musicalis, was released in May 2020. It is partly a soundscape drawn from our most mysterious continent and partly a response to the natural radio sounds of our planet. It invites us to relax and enjoy the sounds of space set to ambient music on the grand piano. The album, which is available for free on Bandcamp, comprises 11 tracks enabling us to experience the changing sounds throughout the day. A three minute compilation of the space sounds with and without music and a music video featuring images from the Bass Image Collection. And I'd like to share the music video with you now. Thank you. 
Our second album, Celestial Incantations, was released in June 2021. This album builds on the first album by introducing a whole new spectrum of space sounds and a huge mag musical palette, including orchestral instruments, traditional instruments and electronics. The album invites the listener to consider the vastness of space, imagining time and space in the grandest sense and embark on a spectacular journey of sound. Starting off at Earth and moving outwards, the album features compositions inspired by and including the sounds of our planet, Mars, a comet, Jupiter, Saturn, interstellar space and the galactic pulsar. The album concludes with a track featuring the sound of the merger of two black holes, as evidenced by the first observed gravitational wave, an almost unbelievable ripple in space-time that Einstein doubted humans could ever capture.
Thank you very much for listening. If you're interested in finding out more information about our project, here are some potential links that you can try.